exciting. And then we print out the success page. But this isn't all that useful. So we've used SQL in the class for some time.、Um, in fact, ever since 2007, we introduced MySQL、mm-hmm. um, as a database engine, and we gave students usernames and passwords, and they actually used that. And we made a pretty big change this year. We're still teaching SQL, but we transitioned to SQL Lite, as you may recall. Yeah.、Um, which was actually pretty game-changing, I thought, and I regret not having thought about it earlier. Um, this is partly because I think, in my mind, SQLite had generally been used as for little toy applications and so forth. But the reality is, it's being used more and more for mobile programming when you want to have a local database that's still SQL queryable,、um, and it just made it so much easier to actually set everything up. Yeah, it really lowers the barrier to entry for students to get acclimated to a database. You don't you don't have to install the software or configure.、And、in the case of CS50 IDE, we don't have to run multiple services on multiple TCP ports, which was really the motivation. And that then to provide students with a web-based interface to It, we were going to have to spawn a second web server in addition to the Flask instance that they're running as their app server. So there was just some annoying real-world complications, and we don't need something like Postgres or MySQL. I, we do want them to learn SQL,、um, but they we, can learn the fundamentals of this of the language without n- needing、exactly. the the more complex database. All of the CRUD operations: select, insert, delete, update. We introduce them to. We have them、uh, create their own tables now, actually, which is nice. Um, we even introduce them to indexes, like so, primary keys and unique indexes, and so forth.、Um, and then we did end up using the web front end, so we used PHP Lite admin, which is very similar in spirit and actually much better than PHP My admin, which is whose、uh, AJAX-based UI has just been getting buggier and buggier over time. So PHP Lite admin actually worked quite well. So I've been thrilled with how this worked. Oh, and and from a teacher's perspective, the database then gets stored in a local binary file, which just means when students submit it, it's included with their submission. Yeah. Oh my gosh. In the past, we had to have students do a SQL dump and oh my god, so many people forget. Their, yeah, and and then it, you, you can't even get the program to Work because you don't have access to the schema that's underneath.、Uh, TFs have to import it. It was just so much more work for really no upside. So I don't know why it took me ten years to to think of this. Iterations, but this is it's interesting. It's not the last piece of the puzzle for sure. There's still JavaScript and there's lots of other things that students can use to to make their sites more robust. But it is a key piece of the puzzle to creating a full fledged. Application and and once we've introduced SQL, this is where many students' final projects will originate. Is having a a front end like we do with、uh, CS50 Finance piece at seven, with、uh, a SQL or SQL Lite、uh, back end. So so finally allowing students to control and search through data.、Um, Really gives them that that final piece because they've by this point they've learned Python, and in the future it's just making the user experience that much better with JavaScript and AJAX. Yeah, and it's a conscious pedagogical decision too that we give them now in Python, formerly in PHP,、uh, uh, now an execute function, so a querying function written in Python that actually abstracts away some of the. Um, implementation details of using a library for SQL. Like we want them, I want them to learn a bit of、uh, SQL fundamentals from this. Don't want them to have to worry as much about like the specific API that they're using, whether it's PDO in PHP or、um, something like SQL Alchemy in Python. So we instead give them just an execute method that, if the student has executed a select, returns you a list of dict objects. If it's an insert or update, we tell you how many、uh, rows were updated or deleted, or an insert. How many rows were inserted, and so that simplification I think works well. But what we did consciously this year too is you can rel- relatively easily remove that、um, from your code, the CS50 library, and just use SQL Alchemy, which is a popular、uh, SQL library in Python, on its own. And our、um, execute query also does some sanitization, right? Yes. Well, and that's actually the most important thing.、Um, and most any library students use should absolutely be doing that. And we didn't want them to be piecing together their own queries and、uh, repeating mistakes that we ourselves highlight in class. And you know, for the first time this year too, we actually introduced、um, an ORM, so an abstraction layer on top of SQL, which we didn't encourage students to use, but I kind of wanted them to see it, even though we didn't spend much time on it. And this, of course, is a way of abstracting away the SQL. Syntax altogether, so that you just think of things in terms of objects, and the hope was that maybe some of our most comfortable students would actually leverage that functionality if they already came in knowing a bit of SQL. But we didn't want to hide the implementation details, so almost every student in the end probably did use raw SQL queries as expected. But there's definitely an advantage to using an ORM and and not having even more concepts.、Um, 
to learn, like having to learn the SQL, the raw SQL. Agreed, but especially these days, especially with so many students going off into to finance or the natural uh, social sciences or natural sciences where there's just data to be processed and with data science so very much in vogue, just having some SQL chops and having that savvy so that you can actually execute raw queries I think is also just a practical skill these days. And I think better that students understand database design at this stage. And this is why we introduce indexes and primary keys and foreign keys and so forth so that they actually think about the underlying data that they're storing and not just treat it as a, an abstract key value store. So much like we start with C and transition to Python, so do we start with SQL. And if they want for their final projects or uh, beyond CS50, use an ORM, so be it. No, that's fair because this also, now we're, we're again encouraging students to be mindful of the design decisions that they're making when putting together their own schema.